The goalkeeping debate will never end in football, will it? Andre Onana is really one of the best goalkeepers in the world. But is he really the best of the best in Europe? That's one of the major things I'm here to discuss. This debate has been going on ever since the talks of Andre Onana joining Manchester United emerged. And today, we are here to give justice to this conversation. Welcome to the hotspot. My name is Webb. Of course, there is many, 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 many stories to look into. But we'll focus mostly on Onana and I'll talk about him a bit later. But we also know that uh, with the news that has just come through from last night is that uh, Rasmus Hoyland the personal terms were already agreed we spoke about this before but it seems united are advanced and they do want to seal him quickly before they proceed to the preseason to the prison tour of the united states including that man andre onana who is uh, also uh, believed to be joining manchester united uh, soon uh, in a few days from now so it's a uh, it's been i think uh, a a busy day of course uh, in terms of united and how We've been in the talks, of course, we continue to put uh, the man himself, uh, Edwin van der Sar, into our prayers, one of the best goalkeepers Man United has had. Uh, he's uh, ailing, uh, you know, trying to fight for his life. We do wish him well, but of course this comes at a time uh, when uh, uh, we, are, we are also you know, looking for a goalkeeper. David De Gea has uh, had his emotional farewell, uh, but uh, United are now focused on if the future without David De Gea, and Andro Nana is top of that. But... I want to talk about this debate, and I've had this debate with uh, a couple of colleagues in WhatsApp groups about Andrew Nana and why I think he's the best goalkeeper in the world. Now, whereas I know for a fact that there are so many good goalkeepers in world football right now, and in Europe, if you think about uh, all the clubs around Europe, I think we've seen some decent goalkeepers there. If I'm to think about some, of course, starting from the World Cup, from uh, uh, Emiliano Martinez of Aston Villa, of course, he cannot be the one of the best now. By that time, probably when his team was winning the World Cup, that's Argentina. He, had, at the moment, perhaps was the best goalkeeper in the world. But I think if we look at it from a league perspective, we've got goalkeepers, you know, goalkeepers who we see regularly play. You've got uh, goalkeepers like uh, Thibaut Courtois, uh, we've got uh, Ederson, we've got uh, Alisson of Liverpool, Ederson of Manchester City. They are certainly uh, some of the best goalkeepers in the world. You've got uh, Tastagen, Andre Tastagen of uh, uh, Barcelona. You've got Manuel Neuer. I, th I don't think he's still the best. So there are, there are some good goalkeepers in the world. But for me, why I say that Andre Onana, the man Man United is, is, is about to, to seal, is a brilliant goalkeeper. If you look at him now, because goalkeepers are not the best for, gener for, for years and ages. Like you would say, Lionel Messi has been the best goalkeeper, in the, rather the best footballer in the world with Cristiano Ronaldo in the past so many years. When it comes to goalkeepers, I think most goalkeepers are seasonal, whereas we shall know that, yes, there is, this goalkeeper is good. There's each, at, during each season, there is a, a, a good goalkeeper for that season, for that time. I remember, we, whereas we know that Granduji before is probably the best goalkeeper we've had in, recent, in the past so many decades in the world, there are seasons when other goalkeepers emerged, the likes of Donnarumma. If you remember when Italy uh, was uh, reaching the final of the Euros, winning the Euros, uh, he was the best goalkeeper in the world at, th at that time. You think about uh, goalkeepers like David De Gea, there is a point when David De Gea was the best goalkeeper in the world. Does that mean that before he had stopped playing football and he wasn't the best? For me, there is a time when uh, Ederson was the best goalkeeper in the world. There was a time, I think a few years ago when Man City was dominating football, Ed Everson, uh, Ever uh, Ederson was the best goalkeeper in the world. There is a time when Liverpool was bossing games. I think it is, it is clear that uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 their goalkeeper was the best in the world. So I think... Right now, it's fair to say that Onana is the best in the world. If we judge by, we judge by how he, his performances for Inter Milan, but mostly uh, for them in the Champions League, I think uh, he's proved to us. By the way, even for national team level, whereas he was he retired from football, uh, for, for, for he play, from playing for his national team after that, uh, you know, incident in the World Cup when he played only one game. And Rigo Batsongo, they had a fallout with Rigo Batsongo about, he had reservations about his tactical abilities, so they disagreed and he chased him out of the camp. And after that, shortly after that, he retired from football. Uh, but, the only one game he played for Cameroon against Switzerland, he made, he broke a world record. He had more touches outside the box, 26 touches on the ball outside the box. More than any other player, 
in the history since statistics since uh, records started in football since we started seeing records in football it had it has never happened it had never it has never happened we have never seen such why am I, my lips a bit dry let me, let me, let me get some water so mm -hmm. so what i'm saying is that this guy is good he's a modern goalkeeper he's a complete modern goalkeeper for the time right now the edersons are still there all these Tastagens, Manioni, and no, name them, they are still there. But for this time, at this moment, he's the best goalkeeper in Europe. And you can have your opinion. Of course, everyone is entitled to their opinion. But for me, I think this is the quality of the goalkeeper we are getting. I want guys to have an understanding. And those guys who have been feeling, you know, like we, 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 we are perhaps, you know, getting a raw deal for the 50 million euros or there about 45 million pounds that uh, we, we might pay. I think you need to understand the goalkeeper you're talking about. He's at his prime, 27, that's the prime age of a goalkeeper. He's extremely hungry. You do remember, man, many of you might have forgotten that a few, I think just in 20, should have been 2021, 20, Andro Nana was found guilty for using a, you know, a, a forbidden drug, a substance. It was found in his urine and he was banned from football for nine months. So he only returned to football. Of course, he's, he was banned for twelve for a year, but uh, you know he appealed, and his appeal was was heard, and the ban was was was, was uh, ended at nine months later. So he was banned for nine months, literally. But for someone not to be playing football at that level for nine months, he comes because he was contracted. By the time he got the ban, he was still playing for Ajax. But when he returned, Ajax released him, and he joins Inter Milan for free. He was there, and um, I wonder why teams like Man United were not thinking ahead and were not seeing him. He was there, but he has always been, we have always known Onana as a brilliant goalkeeper. But Inter Milan gets him for free. No club wanted to, to, to associate with him. One season later, he has had only one season with Inter Milan in 2022. Imagine returning from a nine-month ban, and you stand, land straight into a team, take it to the Champions League final. That shows... A mentality but also a hunger that after nine months he wants to come back and prove something and for me i feel like we are getting him at the point when he's still hungry uh, which i think for me even his bigger motivation I, you, you feel he's going to have that attitude. so for me but also think about how difficult that is to just return and after yeah you're, you're, you're playing the champions league final and you're now attracting manchester united it shows how good a goalkeeper he is so I actually think he's only going to get better. The four years and extra one year he's going to sign with United are going to make him the best goalkeeper in the world for some reason of time. But, of course, there are things to worry about him in terms of him, his style, because the pressure will be there, I think, for the fans. If you're passing that ball like that, we're not sure how much it might work in the Premier League. But if he has done it at the world stage, when his Cameroon was playing Switzerland, certainly it's his game and he's confident enough to do it. He's so beautiful on the ball. He's so good, confident on the ball that UEFA described him as a, a sweeping goalkeeper. He's a sweeper-keeper. That's what they describe him. So he has sort of reinvented the goalkeeping position. Not that there are not goalkeepers who have been playing like him before him, but I think he has taken it a notch higher with how he plays with the ball and confidently. But that's the, goal, the quality of the goalkeeper we are getting. And for me, I think we need to see him like yesterday. Let's, not, let's be Man United. Let us not spend time and time bidding and rebidding for players who we, should be, who we know we need. David De Gea has gone. There is no need to waste any time. I, I, I hear that the valuation, you know, the process might drag because the valuation of the player uh, is uh, Man United is four, 4 million pounds less than what... Uh, 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 what Inter Milan want, and I'm thinking, pay the money. I mean, uh, in this market, this this Onana should be a 70 million, 80 million goalkeeper. That's how hot he is. That's the level at which in this market, this is a bargain for United. Sort him. You want him for the preseason? Let it happen because it's, I think it's in the hands of Man United. I don't think Inter Milan is being like Chelsea, who are really overpricing a player, and eventually they they won anyway. But I feel like Inter Milan are being lenient and United are being too, you know, they're being too stingy. I don't know that it's because the money is not there. If it's not to be sad, if United can struggle to find four million pounds, then the, the Glazers have really messed it up. But I think we should sort that like yesterday. Let us not dwell because I heard that the, the, the process might be delayed of, because of the a variation of four million pounds in valuation of the player. 
and I'm thinking and Dean Henderson could then stay as number one. Oh, that's that's nonsense. It can't happen. So that's what what for me for, for, for me I'm thinking. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you. Subscribe to the hot spot. My name is Webb. See you later.